Hi everyone, welcome to 7 Shifts. We are labor management software made 100% for restaurants. My name is Dylan and with this session I'll be walking you through the initial steps to get your account set up as well as introducing you to the key features within 7 Shifts. Let's get started. To log in through a browser we'll be using app.7shifts.com. We also have mobile apps for Android and iOS which are free to download. Every user within the account has their own login using their email address. I am logged in as an admin user, which means I have full control over the entire account. This is usually the person who owns the business or who is paying for the account. What you're looking at now is the dashboard tab, which is an amazing tool for you and your team. It allows your sales, labor, staff requests, and more all to live in one place so you can get more done in less time and make better scheduling decisions. In the sales versus labor graph, you can hover over any of the data points to analyze different variables on the chart. You can also see your latest requests and activities in the pending requests and activity log feeds below. To set up your account, we'll start with company settings. Only admins have access to this section and configuring these will be an important first step to making sure that your system works with your needs in mind. These settings will affect all locations within your account. These include what day of the week you'd like your schedule to start on, labor settings relating to overtime and breaks, as well as advanced settings to help you stay compliant in specific jurisdictions. Other settings here relate to availability, shift pool, schedules, and time off. Now I'm going to show you how the account structure works in 7 Shifts. It starts with a location, which is the physical restaurant. Each location has location-specific settings relating to its hours of operation, applicable holidays, and our shift feedback feature. This allows for within 15 minutes of a shift ending for employees to receive a push notification to rate their shift and submit any comments. These are only available for managers to see in the manager logbook, which we'll cover shortly. Under each location, there are departments and roles. In this case, we have both back of house and front of house departments. Each department accounts for a separate schedule, so we recommend having as many departments as schedules that you currently post. Within each department, we have roles, which are the job titles employees are assigned to. You can further customize roles into stations to allow for even more specific scheduling. Here's what your locations, departments, and roles will look like on your schedule page. You can have as many locations, departments, and roles as you need in your account. Please note that we will charge per location, so each location that is added will be billed. For our next steps to set up your account, we'll go to the Add-ons tab. If your point of sale system or payroll system integrates with 7 Shifts, this is where you'll come to manage your integration settings by selecting third party. Depending on your point of sale system, 7 Shifts can bring in real-time sales and labor data, which will show on your dashboard, schedule page, and throughout your reporting. You can either bring in your point of sale time clocking data or use our 7 Punches add-on for labor data. Simply turn on the appropriate toggle for whichever source we'll be using in your account and complete the related settings. The Manage menu, shown as these three lines, gives you access to manage your employees as well as review the three types of requests that your managers will receive from their teams. Accessing the Employees tab here, we have a handy importer sheet which will allow for a quick upload of your team. Or you can add them individually by clicking the green Add button. Let me show you an example of an existing employee profile. Each employee has a profile attached to them, which is where you can edit their information. In order to have an account and log in, the employees will need to have an email address entered. A mobile phone number allows our system to send SMS notifications. The user status is how the hierarchy of users is managed. 
The administrator on the account is the super user, which is who I'm logged in as today. Beneath them are managers, then assistant managers, and finally, employees. Once an employee is made a manager, they'll have advanced permissions available that you can customize here. For now, let's keep this employee as an employee user type. Under the Locations, Departments, and Roles tab, you can manage where the employee is able to be scheduled and where they'll have access. The HR Payroll tab is where you'll enter the pay rate for that employee. If you've turned on wage-based roles in your company settings, you'll be able to assign different wages for each role that that employee is assigned to. You can also assign a skill level from beginner to advanced for each role an employee is assigned to. This factors into our template tool, which we'll discuss shortly. You can also add manager or admin facing notes to their profile. These are not seen by your employees, but will be visible to you on the scheduling page to help influence your scheduling decisions. The first type of request is availability. This is where your employees can submit their weekly or repeating availability. This is how they will communicate to you when they should or shouldn't be scheduled on a weekly basis. For example, if an employee typically can't work Sundays and Mondays because they have another job, they would enter this in their repeating availability. The next type of request relates to the shift pool. This is where your employees can trade shifts with each other. In order for a trade to take place, it will require your approval. Through their app, an employee will see an offer up button on shifts they're scheduled for. Once the shift is offered up by the employee, qualified employees are notified and have the option to bid on that shift. When at least one bid is placed on the shift, it comes to a manager as a shift trade request. We will show you if there are any possible conflicts with that trade, like if it would potentially put that employee into overtime. The final type of request relates to time off. If an employee has a day they absolutely cannot work, they can submit a time off request to their manager. They will use this for vacation or personal days and time off is tracked through our reporting section. The request comes to management for approval and will show conflicts with previously approved time off. With all three types of these employee requests that we've seen, the employee will be notified when the request is approved or declined. Under time off, there is also a calendar view available. The approved requests appear in green and the pending requests are in black. This bird's eye view will give you a better idea of how many people may have a certain day off. You can also block certain days from employees requesting that day off under blocked days. Now we'll head back to the schedule tab. We offer three different layouts for creating and viewing the schedule. List, list by role, and time frames layouts. First, I'll start with the list view. The employees are listed down the left hand side and each shift that's added for the week will add to that employee's total hours and labor costs. You'll see the days of the week listed on the top row along with your daily weather forecast to help with your scheduling decisions. To sort employees and move them around, you will simply click and drag them to your preferred order. Hovering over an employee will also reveal the manager facing notes that we set in their profile. Seven shifts works great for helping schedule employees across locations as we have multi-location support. Here's an example of an employee shift at another location. This helps to avoid double scheduling. The yellow and red corner flags that you see throughout are the approved availability getting pulled into the schedule. The approved time off requests also appear here. When creating shifts, seven shifts will provide warnings in if the shift conflicts with the approved time off and availability. To add a shift, simply click the plus sign, choose the role the employee will be working, as well as select the time of that shift. Add any notes which will pertain to the shift and you can also select multiple days if that's going to be a repeating shift. Hitting saved will lock that shift in as a draft shift. 
you can click and drag the shift or copy and paste by holding down the shift key on your keyboard and then clicking and dragging. This easily allows you to make a number of like shifts very quickly. Using our shift flag feature, you can mark an employee as sick, late, or no-show, and this will be tracked through our reports tab. We also offer overtime warnings if you have over, overtime rules set in your company settings. All conflicts will populate at the top of the schedule so you can clearly see how many may need to be resolved. Now I'll show you how to create a shift in our time frame layout. With this view, you'll see it broken down by roles with your required shift times along the left hand side. Click the plus icon to add a shift. From here, it will show you exactly who's available to work the shift in green. The employees unavailable to fill the shift will populate at the bottom in red. It also shows you when they last worked along with their next upcoming shift. Finally, we'll move to list by role. This is probably our most popular layout. Similar to list layout, it's going to nest employees underneath the roles that they typically work, which provides a visual indicator of the roles that those employees should be scheduled for. Once you've placed your shifts and completed your schedule, click Publish Now at the top of the page to alert your team to the new schedule. Our Templates feature allows you to create rules for what you require in your schedule. Once completed, you pull in the template and it easily creates a draft schedule for you, meeting all of your shift requirements while avoiding uh, overlapping with approved availability, time off, or any of your overtime rules. Here I've created a small template with the rules I need for my schedule. Let's take a look at how this works and head back to the schedule page where we'll pull in this template by clicking the tools icon and selecting fill from template. Let's review and see how it looks. Looks great. The day view allows you to see your employee count and sales projections on an hourly basis, as well as adjust your schedule through the daily view. Returning to the weekly view of our schedule. Our weekly budget tool allows you to accurately project your labor targets and if your point of sale system is integrated with seven shifts, your projected and actual sales will automatically populate here. You can also manually fill in these sales numbers as well as your labor targets percentage by clicking the cell. The green and red bubbles will indicate whether you've scheduled within your labor percentage target or if you're exceeding your labor percentage target. Our events feature is where you'll add all events for your restaurant. All events populate at the top of the schedule and employees will also have access to the events calendar. Moving on from the schedule page, our manager logbook works as a system of record for your manager and admin teams, allowing them to all stay in the loop regarding a location's daily operations. Your management team is able to submit entries for the various categories to record their daily logs. As an admin, you can click categories to customize the categories shown to your team. The engagement dashboard is where you can see statistics like lates, no-shows, sick times, drop shifts, and more. The dashboard highlights this data so you can monitor how workplace engagement may change week to week and gain insight into your team's engagement. The Tasks tab integrates with our 7 Tasks app where you can easily create custom task lists for your entire team. Lists can be applied 
to entire locations or specified for certain departments and roles. Navigating to our Reports tab next, we have a number of in-depth reports available for you. For example, the time off report shows all time off taken by employees. The attendance report is where sh those shift flags that mark employees as sick, late, or no-show are pulled in and tracked. And the actuals report will show your sales and labor summaries. Communication is a big struggle in many restaurants. With seven shifts, you can house it all within our app. Default notifications is emails and SMS, but as soon as an employee has the mobile app downloaded, we can also rely on push notifications. The first communication we to tool we have is announcements. This is used for one-way communication with employees and allows you to send a message blast to your staff. You can select the group for that announcement to be sent to here. Sending an announcement is limited to admin and manager access only. Next door to announcements, we have the speech bubble where you'll find our messaging feature. This allows more of a conversation within your team with every location, department, and role having their very own messaging group. Every employee who is assigned to that group has the ability to post comments, reply, and upload attachments. Under the People tab, you can create your own custom chats with whomever you might need to speak with. This is a handy since you won't need to provide your staff with contact information. It's all in seven shifts. Finally, you have a few other resources available to you within our platform. If you hover over your profile picture and choose support, our knowledge base opens up and you can self-serve here with a number of different articles. Or if you're not able to find what you're looking for, you can contact our support team here. I hope this has been a helpful session for you as you get started with seven shifts. Happy scheduling!